I'm super happy to be able to introduce Mayush, uh, the release maintainer of Django currently and working at Django Fellowship. Um, and um, you're going to share a talk with us about something that despite having used migrations for a long, long time, we might have missed something, some superpowers. We'll see. <laughs> yes, we can to my Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me, both in person here in Copenhagen and remotely all over the world. I just wanted to say that it's really amazing to, to meet Jack after the last three years, which, which have been quite difficult to, to all of us. This talk, we'll discuss one of the secret power of Django Migrants. But it's definitely not widely used and not well known. I should from introducing myself. My name is Mariusz Felisiak. I'm a member of the Django security and operations team. I'm also a Django contributor, a Django 3.1 and 4.0 release manager, and a Django fellow since 2019. So if you have any questions about the Django fellowship program, about the Django Software Foundation, or about Django itself, don't hesitate to ask after this talk. You can find me on Twitter and on GitHub if you want. This will be my first Django talk uh, ever, so please be understanding. <coughs> The Migrations Framework has been a part of Django since version 1.7. It is a way of propagating changes in models into your database. And I think that we'll all agree that it's, it's basically awesome. It was a big step in making web development in Django more accessible because the Migrations Framework and its ancestor, the South Package, caused web developers to no longer had to know, to no longer had to write, and to no longer have to maintain SQL statements with data definitions. And maintaining SQL statements can be, can be really painful, but that's how it was in old days. Over the past 15 years, I've written a lot of SQL statements with data definitions. Fortunately, you don't need to do this anymore, at least in most of cases. The standard workflow for changing your data definition has Two steps. First, make a change. In this case, we are adding a new model called Mountain to our test uh, app. Second step is to generate a new migration file by running the make migrations command. A new migration file which describes changes that we made in models and changes that are needed in the database structure. They are not exactly the same, so we have here two different layers, changes in models and changes in a database structure, and differences between them will be quite crucial for this talk. Uh, the last step is to propagate changes uh, into your database by running the migrate command. At the point, we already have a new table in the database. How our migration file is structured. The generated migration file contains the list of dependencies, uh, for example, the previous migration names, the list of operations to perform. In our case, we have uh, create model, and whether it is a first initial migration or not, via the initial flag. This is the first initial migration. That's why the initial flag is set to is set to true. So far, so good. But but the question is what to do with changes. Business requirements change every day. We want to add new features, we want to change the existing ones, we want to remove features between versions, etc. Changes in an app logic are causing changes in models and at the end also the database structure. Luckily for us, almost all of them are handled really efficiently by migrations. And we are trying to improve this in every version of Django. In Django 4.0, we improve the detection of uh, noob operations. Uh, operations such as changing field attributes that do not affect column definition. So for such operations, we generate, uh, for such changes, we generate uh, operations uh, in, in migrations, but in the same time, no SQL statements are issued. We generate operations because mi the migration framework on its own, it's, it's able and must be able to 
recreate models at any point in their life cycle without checking our model's definition. And that's why it's so important to reflect all changes that we made in models uh, in the migration framework uh, and describe them uh, in subsequent operations. Uh, that's how migrations are able to recreate models at any point in, in their life cycle. So, uh, we generate operations, but no SQL statements are issued for uh, for such a um, uh, for such changes. Unfortunately, there are some uh, specific transitions that do not play nice with Django flow. So there are changes that uh, seem painless when you look at raw SQL, but in the same time uh, are problematic from the Django point of view. Um, maybe problematic is. Uh, is a wrong word, changes that cannot be handled automatically in the most efficient way. Let's take a look at a simplified <laughs> example of such change. Suppose that you have a climbing site, a climbing site that provides information about climbers and their ascents. Nothing fancy, three models, one for mountains, one for climbers, and one for ascents, with a many to many relation between climbers and mountains via the ascent model. So we have a custom, uh, through intermediate table called ascent. We have a custom true table because it has an extra flag code called confirm, which stores uh, whether this climb is confirmed or not. We've maintained this site for many years. We've collected data about hundreds of thousands of ascents. And at some point of time, we realized that we don't have many unconfirmed ascents. And to be honest, we don't need them. They are not used anywhere on our site. So well, we would like to remove them from the database, but also we would like to simplify our model definition by, by removing the uh, custom true table, uh, by, by removing the custom true model called ascent. Because without the confirm flag, it will contain only two foraging keys, one for climber and one for mountain. So exactly the same as Django would use for auto-generated intermediate table. So without the confirm flag, it is completely unnecessary. And of course, we would like to simplify our model definition and and uh, remove it. In the first step, we're going to remove all unconfirmed ascents from the database to make this confirmed flag unnecessary. We could do this by run the delete statement directly in the database, but of course we'd like to keep this in migrations, uh, do this in Python and use the, 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 the powerful Django RM. When we want to keep data migrations in the migrations framework, we need to we need to create a new blank migration to which we will add uh, data migrations. For that, to create a new blank migration, we can use the empty flag to make migrations command to generate a new blank migration, a new blank migration that will be well structured, that will be structured as a migration file. Uh, in order to 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 follow good practices and to avoid migration names based on based on uh, on timestamps. I recommend to always pass uh, the name flag when we want to generate a new blank migration file. I passed remove not confirmed ascents, which makes it clear what this migration, uh, what this migration uh, will do. That's how our blank migration looks like. As we can see, dependencies are already filled, and we have an empty list of operations. An empty list of operations to which we will add run Python. Run Python is a special operation which allows to run Python code in uh, migrations. So with run Python, we, we will be able to use the ORM to filter out unconfirmed assets and remove them without writing any raw SQL. And that's our main goal at uh, this step. This is a ready-to-go migration. Uh, we added run Python to the list of operations. Run Python accepts two arguments, code and reverse code. Code, it is a function to be run when this uh, operation is being applied and reverse code, it is a function to be run when this operation is being rolled back. In this step, uh, in, in this case, uh, we don't need uh, unconfirmed ascents, so we don't uh, need to make this step reversible. We just want to get rid of unconfirmed ascents. In such cases, we can use a special hook uh, that is defined in run Python. It's called noop. And it it's basically does nothing. It's it's a noob, but it's a it is uh, uh, a perfect shortcut when 
uh, transition from one direction on, or an opposite direction uh, is a loop. Functions that uh, are passed to code and to reverse code must accept two arguments, absent schema editor. It's uh, extremely important to always use models written from apps get model method and not imported directly from models. It's important because we need to use model from a cert uh, certain point in its life cycle and not its current version. It's important because in a subsequent migration, uh, we want to remove confined flag. So this filter will not be valid anymore. And at the end, we want to get uh, rid of the ascent model. So it will not even be importable from, from, uh, from, from models. That's why it's, it's, it's so important to always use model uh, from, a cert from a certain point in its life cycle and not current version. When we have model, we can filter out unconfirmed ascents and delete them. Now we have only confirmed ascents in the database and confirmed flag uh, in the ascent model is completely unnecessary. We can use a standard flow to remove it. So first, uh, so first remove confirmed uh, field from the ascent model, then run make migrations and migrate. At this point, we have the ascent model with exactly the same structure as Django would use for auto-generated intermediate table. So it only has two foraging keys, one for tables and one for mods, and nothing else. The main question is how to persuade Django, how to persuade Django that the appropriate structure is already there and there is not much to do. And the only thing that we need to do is to rename, is to rename table uh, that is uh, currently, that currently exists for the ascent model to a name that Django expects for auto-generated intermediate table. My answer for this question is a special and extremely powerful operation, which I want to encourage you to use. It's called separate database and state. It has quite long, but uh, self-explanatory name. Uh, it allows to separate uh, database and project state. So it allows to separate changes that uh, are recognized by Django as being made in models from changes that are needed in the database structure. So it allows us to persuade Django that, that uh, Django recognize as being made in models were applied as it expects, but in the same time use optimized database operations to make tricky or sometimes even impossible transitions more feasible. Before we'll use it, let's take a step back and see what Django uh, what, what Django uh, will do with our change. This is the diff. We want to get rid of the uh, custom true table. So we remove the ascent model and we also remove the uh, true parameter from our many to many field. These changes, uh, th these two changes uh, literally describe what we want to do, but that's uh, that's not exactly the 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 the, the uh, entire the entire change because we don't want to remove data from the database we don't want to get rid of all uh, data about us and that we collected over it we want to keep them we want to keep them in a perfect world keep them in the same place without any data migrations without intermediate steps uh, we would like to do this in the most efficient way but in the same time these two, two, two changes uh, describe literally uh, what, we, what we need to do. Unfortunately, Django does not know our intentions, so it will interpret, uh, so it will interpret these changes literally. Make migrations generate two uh, operations, altered field ascent on the climber model because we removed the true parameter, and delete model ascent because that's exactly what we did. Of course, that is not uh, exactly what we want to do because we want to keep uh, data in the same place. Let's think about it. Is this even possible to, to handle changes in the true parameter automatically? All changes, 
in the true parameter would require multiple SQL statements because true parameter describes a table that links to other tables. So even in the simplest case, we need to create new intermediate table, migrate data from the old structure to a new one and remove the old structure. So this transition would require at least three, five, seven, it depends on circumstances, uh, intermediate intermediate steps and uh, at least at least few SQL statements. Transitions that require multiple SQL statements are complicated and they are error prone. There is also an open question about atomicity. In some databases, as PostgreSQL, you cannot mix DDL statements with uh, data migrations in the same table, in the same atomic transaction. So we would be forced to create intermediate steps, uh, in, in intermediate steps uh, to, to, to perform this change. This flow does not sound really reliable, and it's not. And Django calls itself a web framework for perfectionists. So what Django could do? Rise an exception. So value error is rise when you try to change true parameter. Uh, when you try to change true parameter on many to many field. So Django leaves user to deal with it on its own. Because when you know a specific circumstances, when you know uh, when you have an extra information about about this relation, you can make this feasible. You may know that you don't have any data in this intermediate table. So it's easier to 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 uh, to remove it and and change this relation. Uh, to this relation, you may know that you can afford for a long downtime to make this five or three or seven steps uh, one by one without creating any intermediate steps. You you can afford for a long downtime. It's fine for you. In, in such cases, it's also it's also feasible. You can you can do this in multiple steps. For example, you can create a new uh, relation with some temporary name, move data from the uh, old relation to a new one, remove the old relation, remove the ascent table, and at the end rename the new relation from a temporary name to a name that we previously used. So it's it's feasible. It's feasible. Uh, to do this in multiple steps, of course, uh, we'd like to be smarter than that, and you can be smarter than that with using separate database and states. We'll do synchronize uh, project states and database state in the in the most efficient, in the most efficient way, and we can do this with separate database. We can use it to persuade Django that the ascent model has been removed, that the uh, Assets relation has been altered to use auto generated intermediate tool, and in the same time use database operations to rename to rename the table that is currently used for the ascent model to enable to a table that Django expects for auto generated uh, intermediate uh, table. That's how uh, the migration um, a migration file generated by Django looks like. So we have two operations. Uh, alter field uh, ascents because we remove the two parameter and delete model ascents uh, ascent. Uh, we know that we know that they cannot be performed and we don't really want to do this. But in the same time, uh, these two operations literally describe changes that we made in models. So what we can do, we can use them in a separate database and state. We can wrap them in this special operation and move them to a state operations to persuade Django that these two changes was uh, were made expect but in the same time use uh, database operations to rename the existing table that's how it looks uh, that's how it looks like uh, we moved these two operations to state operations and in the database operations we run we added uh, run sql run sql is quite similar to run python it also accepts two arguments sql and reverse sql and in this case we added a row SQL to rename, to rename the table for the ascent model to a name that Django expects for auto-generated intermediate table. Uh, one missing part, 
our names for for uh, table for the ascent model and for uh, auto generated intermediate table we can inspect them uh, by checking uh, meta so timer uh, is our model ascents our many to many relation true when we do not define true table then django uh, implicitly creates uh, creates uh, many to many intermediate table and many to many model for us so true is a model and as for any other model we can uh, inspect meta and check db table uh, that's how we that that's how we figure out that uh, django for this auto generated intermediate table expect uh, test up climbert ascents table we could do this we could do this uh, the same for the ascent model but we already remove it so as a fallback we can uh, use sql migrate command to check the old migration file <laughs> to check the old migration file in which we added the ascent model and as we can see there is uh, an operation uh, there is a sql statement uh, described as create model ascent and we have a table name test up ascents so we have both names now we can use them in separate database and state and everything everything is ready we have a migration that describes potentially not physical transition in the most efficient way. So without any data migration, that's uh, with minimum downtime and it's even reversible. It's even uh, reversible. You can ask if that's maybe an edge case that this special operation covers. Of course not. There are plenty of other use cases uh an opposite transition so changing a many to many field to use true model is even described in django docs we have at least few changes in project states that do not require any database changes like modernizing your indexes or constraints definition from the old way with using index together unique together db index or a unique flags to a new meta indexes and meta constraints so we don't indexes we don't want to recreate them we don't want to rename them in the same place and we can do this uh, with using separate database so it's described in uh, details uh, in adam johnson blog post it's uh, also a great solution for moving models between because it's also not obvious how to how to do this when you want to move a uh, model from a source app to a target app then you can use separate uh, database and state to simply clear uh, to simply first, uh, sorry, to simply first move it, then uh, generate migrations on a source app, move removed uh, model operation to a uh, state operations, and in the database operations, use rename to rename it from a name expected name expected for a model in a target app, and in a target app, do the same.
Um, I would say that it's not necessary for most of users. And secondly, uh, it would require to generate two migrations uh, in a single step. And then users uh, would need to control that they deploy only the first one to instances and then uh, leave, the, leave the second one for, for a second step, yeah, for example. So um, it, it would be tricky. <laughs> And you are the release maintainer also. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot allow. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes, in the front. Yes. Um, you showed to us that you made a first migration to delete um, some rules with uh, through values on yeah. the Boolean field, and then you made the second one. Yeah. Do you recommend to separate these, or you can also <laughs> make all the steps in one migration? Um, so there's pros and cons on this. I I made it that way uh, because uh, in in some databases it's not possible. Yeah, on on PostgreSQL you cannot you cannot delete uh, rows from a table and in the same atomic transaction. Uh, delete, a, uh, remove a column from from the table. It's it's simply uh, so. So PostgreSQL does not allow for 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 that. That's why I uh, split it into uh, multiple steps. I think there was uh, another question. Yes. <clears throat> when doing um, data migrations with run Python, it's uh, really annoying sometimes that it's impossible to use uh, properties on models. Sometimes you have to. Repeat a whole bunch of code because you have a property which calculates some value or something, but they're not available inside the web type. And will that ever be uh, changed? So properties are usable in the uh, one Aha, so if I understand the question correctly, you cannot access special properties <laughs> methods inside the run Python. Uh, yes, and will that be possible someday? So uh, you cannot access them for exactly th this reason that, that uh, I, I mentioned in this talk, that the migration framework does not use uh, models definitions from, from, from models. Yeah? It recreates model each time uh, by inspecting uh, migration files. So properties are not available when you are doing this th that way. So keep, keeping uh, so to 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 make this work, we need to keep properties in migrations because they may not be, for example, backward compatible. Yeah, you may in properties use fields that are not exist anymore, or you may change these properties uh, in 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 their life cycle. So it sounds difficult, really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um, any more questions? I, yes. Uh, yeah, just continuing that, couldn't we have a, an operation to add yeah. properties to the migration state? Mm. So the question so is: I tell the migrations that this model has this. Function. Theoretically, can migrations be aware of uh, methods of models? So I. I I would say that that's exactly the same issue as we have when we, for example, uh, squash migrations. Yeah. Well, when you squash, when you squash, uh, when you uh, squash migration, then you also uh, cannot. Uh, so, so you need to manually backport functions that 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 you use in in uh, migrations that that were squashed. Yeah. Uh, so here we have exactly exactly the same issue that uh, keeping properties uh, keeping properties uh, in migrations would be as complicated as keeping any other functions in migrations so we need to have a way to uh, to to uh, serialize them somehow yeah, yeah? So you are also saying that you're kind of free to go yourself and put those yeah. in your migration <laughs> files, and then you can use them. 
Um, yeah, I uh, saw that you used this uh, run Python no up uh, noob function that I thought was really clever. Um, but is there any best practice around these um, reversible and uh, non reversible? Uh, um, Sometimes I feel bad that I'm actually causing data loss by removing uh, mm. uh, a field and then pretending nothing happens if people go the other way. Uh, is, is there an exception you can also throw? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, it depends. <laughs> In in uh, a case like uh, I I described in in this talk, it was not necessary. Uh, in some cases, uh, it's possible even in run Python to recreate uh, remote uh, things because, for example, they can uh, rely on some other uh, properties or or models. Like uh, for example, in built-in migrations, we have uh, a content type migration. That is also reversible, but it's quite tricky to, to reverse it. When we uh, change uh, when we change columns in in uh, in in per I don't remember in permissions uh, uh, at at some point in Django. So it also we, we change from two columns to one column. Then it is reversible in Django. It's this step is reversible, so it are recreated again. Uh, but it's 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 hard to achieve. I would say that if it's feasible, then we should make any step reversible. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, there isn't any more time for questions now. But thank you so so much, Mayush. Thank you. And <laughs> we are gonna see if we can. Uh, make a direct change without any break at all and uh...